Well, good financial advisors are, are just great people, and Teresa, it's been a real honor. So if you want to get to know Teresa better, just dial 1-800-TERESA and she'll, she'll, <laughs> she'll chat. Uh, we, have some, we have some businesses represented in the room today. Uh, one of our models is, you, this is clearly, you saw the pipeline in that quick ignite briefing tying business to education. <clears throat> the first adopter of that was Frank Harris with DPIX. And Frank, you honor us. He, he carried the first check over to the foundation and said, I'm a recipient of those kids, and I need them because we're not growing them organically. John Sweetland with Harloff Manufacturing is right, right on Frank's heels. Mike League has helped us and is helping us in many, many ways. Mike, by the way, you are the screen sponsor. You stole that from your bank. We will give it back to you uh, right after the lunch. Uh, you don't even know that. So uh, know what to do with it. We're, we're, not, we're, we're not for profit, so we need to schlep anything we can get. So to our, to our, our, business, our business supporters, uh, this is a model. We, we even have it on our website where we can link businesses to school systems and career path those kids right into the workforce. There is no greater economic development or vitality uh, link. And, and, and as I said in our board meeting this morning, Mark Lautman, who has written a seminal piece of work on growing economies uh, called When the Boomers Bail, because that's where the game's being played right now. Sorry, but that's just the way it is for all of us. Uh, this intrigued Mark enough that he flew up here on his own nickel from Albuquerque to be part of this today. That, that's a big thing to us because he has a thousand ways he can invest his, his precious time and energy. So let's, let's get into the customer base a little bit. We're honored to have the superintendent of Harrison District 2, who just moved up here recently from Houston Independent School District. And how are those rockets doing down there? Just checking. Oh, okay. Yeah, not too much, okay. And, uh, but the Spurs are doing good, not too far to the west of you. So uh, Dr. Uh, Andre Spencer, please come up and say hi to the group. We're honored to have you. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to take take a few moments to actually refer us to the, the motto here for See the Change. One student today, one nation tomorrow, and really explain how that fits with my vision for the school district. My vision for the school district is that we are graduating students who are college and career ready. And what do we mean when we talk about college and career ready? That's identifying those students who leave us at the end of their 12th grade year entering into a two or four year institution of higher education where they will not have to take any remediation courses. We want them to be able to enter on an even playing field with their counterparts. And we will do that with initiatives like this. So I know that, um, Jim, you mentioned that uh, you didn't want to turn Carmel into a, a tourist attraction. <laughs> I, I'm going to say that's OK to do. <laughs> because I, I really would like to invite each of you out to see the great things that's happening at, at Carmel Middle School with regards to physics. As a former seventh grade science teacher, it is extremely important that our kids learn the skills because it's important that when kids begin to learn problem solving skills, critical thinking skills, that's going to help them to accelerate and excel when they move on to, to college. I wanna just quickly share with you some of the results from some of the assessments that the students at Carmel um, performed in regards to the district. Um, we give students uh, assessments pretty much every quarter. And I'm going to outline for you one of the quarters and how the students at, at Carmel performed with regards to the district for each grade level. For sixth grade, when we take a look at our science assessment, our uh, sixth graders at Carmel performed at the 79% passing rate versus at the district 55% passing rate. Students uh, in seventh grade at Carmel were, were at the 85th percent passing rate versus the district 72% passing rate. And for eighth grade, 86% passing rate versus the district 70% passing rate. So we have to begin to look at what are those things that's happening at Carmel Middle School that we can have replicated in all of our schools so that we can make sure that all of our students 
are progressing at that rate that we see the students at Carmel progressing. And when we look at the initiative of physics in middle school, I can tell you, being a seventh grade, a former seventh grade science teacher, that wasn't happening in my middle school. In Houston, that was not happening in my middle schools. But here, it's happening. When I actually get to see students engaged in projects where they're demonstrating the skills that they have learned, because it's one thing for us to learn the skill, but it's a separate thing for us to begin to demonstrate or apply that skill to a real world situation. And when you visit Carmel and see students engaged in those activities, it is mind blowing because we know that we're setting those students on a stage to be at the top of their graduating <coughs> classes, to have the top performances when it comes down to selecting a college or a university to attend. One thing that I always share with students when I have a conversation with them is that the world is your playground. We have to give you the tools and the equipment to be able to play in it. These are the tools and these are the equipments that we're going to provide students to be able to go out and play in the world. We can't just give lip service to saying that students should have options. We have to provide them with the skills to be able to actually have those options. So that when they depart us, students are making good, sound decisions. Rather they're deciding to go into the workforce or rather they're deciding to go to college, students will have the skill set to be able to do the tasks that they're going to be charged with doing. That's being done. We're doing some great things in Harrison. We have to do some better things. My, my goal is I want to be the best in the country. Not the best in Colorado, not the best in Colorado Springs, but I want to be the best in the country. And we can do that. These are ways in which we can begin to do that. So if you haven't had an opportunity to visit and to see how students at Carmel are getting these wonderful uh, performance grades, I'm going to charge you with taking that opportunity to go and visit, ask students questions about what they are engaged in, what are they learning, how does that connect to something that will help them in the real world. They will be able to explain that to you. That is where the real learning is taking place through the ability to be able to explain how what you have learned applies to something in your life or something in someone else's life. So thank you again for this wonderful, wonderful opportunity for our students over at, at Carmel. I'm going to say that my push is to make this available for students, period. That, that's my goal. But I also just want to say to you, continue to support us as a district. Continue to hold us accountable as a district and know that our goal is making sure that we are graduating students who are college and career ready and students who will have the tools and the equipment to make the world their playground. Thank you.